Hi, everybody. All right, we got a two for today. We're going to start by bolting down the oil cooler. You may have seen me putting the fittings on in the last video or so. We've got both of the oil cooler lines going in. They fit nicely. No interactions with anything else. Everything's got its own space. That's what we like. Uh, one word of advice, though, if you are going to be using the Airwolf remote oil filter like I did, the return line, I don't know if it's a return line, but the, the line that goes underneath where the oil filter is from the oil cooler, it won't fit very well. Because it's got a 90 degree elbow and normally you would just have a straight fitting out of the engine and then t uh, tighten that in. Problem is you can't really get it in there, so what you need is a 45 degree fitting coming out of the engine. And then you can attach that 90 degree fitting from the line from Vans and it works great. Or get a different line. But I mean that's it fits, I'm happy. Alright, so now that we've got it bolted down, here's the five inch scat tubing for it. Vans went from four to five inch to help increase the cooling. The problem is they could not introduce a five inch round hole into the oil cooler shroud. So instead they have made it octagonal. And I don't care how good you are, you cannot bend the spring steel inside that damn scat tubing well enough to slip over that octagonal piece. So you're going to have to remove the wire to make sort of a soft, uh, like a soft sleeve, we call it. And it's fine, it attaches well. Alright, so now that I got frustrated and couldn't figure out how to do that, we are moving over to the exhaust. My buddy Larry brought the left side of the exhaust back. You can see the bung that he welded in place for me for the oxygen sensor on the number two exhaust. Uh, why do we have an oxygen sensor and why is it right there? Well, like in injected, like in fuel injected, computer injected cars, use an O2 sensor to determine how much oxygen is being used in combustion. Then your system can tweak its mix. That's the basics of it. Uh, because this is a leaded engine, however, we need that oxygen sensor to be close to the flame front so it gets very, very hot. The thing about O2 sensors is they're voltage producing sensors and they use heat to make that voltage, so they've got to get up to 600 degrees C anyway before they even start making a signal. Or maybe it's 600 degrees Fahrenheit. It's 600 something. But because we're using leaded fuels, you need that, you want that sensor to be very hot as to reduce the chance of the lead sticking. Because once it sticks and starts gumming up the signal, that's it. That is it. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take the sensor apart because you can just buy an oxygen sensor. I mean, they don't make, I mean, they really don't make them for Lycoming because this is not a thing, right? Um, you know, mine's off a of Chrysler. Mine's a Bosch O2 sensor, and it's a five-wire sensor. What that means is there's two wires for the heat, there's one for the signal, there's one signal ground, because, right, this thing is making its own voltage, it's not regulated, so use a signal ground to sort of make sure that the signal's clean. In our case, we ground it directly to the number one battery. And then there's a fifth wire that you don't use. So, unfortunately, uh, there's no color code <laughs> um, anywhere on the internet that I could find, so I'm going to have to uh, investigate and figure out which wire is which. So I'm going to put 12 volts around. We've got to find out which ones are the power. That's easy enough. But then, what you really want to do to test the sensor is we're going to put it in the clamp, and we're going to do this in the next video. We're going to clamp it down. We're going to get a propane torch, and we're going to heat it up. As we're heating it up, we're going to test various the other wires that come out to figure out which one's the signal. Because, again, you need it to be very hot, but also for it to actually <clears throat> give a varying signal, you have to use all the O2 around, right? Because it normally is looking at exhaust from an, uh, you know, an engine that's burning O2. So you have a big propane torch on it, burn all the O2 off around it, and you'll start getting a signal on it, so... But that's, that's in the next video, which is really cool. So, <clears throat> Thank you for joining me, everyone. In the next video, we're going to have uh, some open flame. So, see you soon.